Hello everybody and welcome to my SnowRunner modding tutorial series. The main premise of this series is not going to be specifically how to use each program, um, but generally to show the required steps uh, that it takes to get a 3D model into SnowRunner and working properly. There are a lot of tutorials on how to use uh, different programs like Blender that we see here or 3DS or whichever 3D modeling software you plan on using. Um, so we're not going to focus specifically on how to make a model. It's going to be more how do we take a model that we have and prepare it for use in SnowRunner. Now, typically, most of my mods, I go to sites like SketchUp or SketchFab, um, TurboSquid, wherever you may find 3D models. And I'll download a, a model from there and then modify it further for use within SnowRunner. So basically, this video series is going to document my typical workflow uh, from start to finish on how I build a model for SnowRunner. And again, I'm going to be editing and truncating and, and whatnot. If there are things that I skip over that you may not know about, it's because those particular things are tip are usually readily found online in other tutorials and, and whatnot. So I am currently working in Blender 2.93. I just downloaded the latest update. Um, a lot of people may be using Blender 2.92 or older. Um, there's some slight differences that I found already just in my brief time with 2.93, but it's nothing, nothing major that's going to radically affect, um, the operations of how to put something into SnowRunner. So first things first that we need to do is this is a brand new open, um, default template that you get when you first open blender and we get a camera a cube and a light we don't want any of those we're going to delete those the next thing that is this is well the first thing that is snow runner specific is the unit of measure we need to change this unit to 0 0.01 and to centimeters that just makes everything very very um compliant and complacent with what SnowRunner is looking for with the game engine itself. So now we don't have any models or anything, so we're going to import a model. And I have some saved that I'm going to be working on. So import this model in. It's all one piece. It's just a single model, a whole lot of I got this one from SketchUp, and as you can see, it's probably not going to work the way it is. So first thing we need to do is orient it correctly, and it came in with a 90 degree rotation. We can delete that rotation. We're at zero. It's also not oriented correctly left to um, spun on the z-axis, looking from the top down. SnowRunner always has this x-axis as front to back and y-axis is left to right. So right now this truck is turned 90 degrees to the way SnowRunner wants it. So we want to be facing the front. So we're going to go 90 degrees this way. So now we're facing the correct direction. But the world origin is going through the center of the truck. And that world origin is where the ground is in SnowRunner. So we need to move this up. So we're going to want it somewhere around here. Then what I'm going to do is apply all transforms. So it applied that rotation and the, the location. So everything goes back to zero. So now we're pretty much centered front to back on that. We are at approximately the right height. 
but we still can't do anything with this truck. The first thing that I always do when I bring in a model is I break it down into parts, especially if you have a single OBJ like this one. Um, it is literally just one piece and nothing else. So to do that, I'll go into edit mode and then I'll go to mesh, separate, loose parts. And that creates an entire listing of every single loose piece that's on this model, which is 573. It might sound like a lot, and it kind of is, but I've seen some that have come up over a, well over a thousand. The, the big saving grace here is the tires don't have any treads on them. Typically, you get a model with tire treads, and each little individual tire tread is its own piece. So you'll have three or four hundred just in a tire. Speaking of tires and rims, we don't need these. These are not included in a model when you're exporting out of SnowRunner, or out of Blender into SnowRunner. The wheels and tires are handled by uh, separate files and called upon within the XML coding, which is going to be covered in a future episode. For now, just know we do not need any tires or rims. So we're going to go through and delete all of this stuff. Okay, next thing I always start to do is start to isolate different parts of the model. Here we have the fender, here we have the hood, doors. So what I'll do is I'll take multiple parts that I know go together. These doors, that hood, these two doors, they're all body panels, so we're going to join those together, and then we're going to rename them as body. And again, I'm not covering all the button commands that I'm doing here with Blender. The, there is countless tutorials on how to use Blender. This is more how I'm going to take 500 and something parts and make them more manageable. So what I'll then do hide those away because I've already renamed them. I've joined them. I know they're part of the truck. We have this antenna here. We have some extra trim that went around the hood. We have the roof, these roof rack pieces. And we'll join them. Two, those are more body parts. So I'll just name them body. And if you notice, it took the first piece and it put an extension on the end of it. And we can continue to do that as we find more pieces. Like now we have an exposed piece here that I didn't see before. Another one. These that also join two. Body. So we can continue to do that as we move through. What I'll do is I'll take the glass, all the glass pieces, join those together, F2, glass, and so on and so forth. Okay, and with a quick edit, we have everything renamed. Um, spare you the painstaking task of going through and name, watching me name every single piece. So I ended up with eight different body pieces, just various sections as I found them. Um, again, as I'm hiding things, I was, oh, there's a gas cap. Oh, there's some trim. There's some door trim around here and I felt those all went together as the body. 
So we will join all those together now and turn it into just one single body piece. The front bumper I join together and typically what I do is I will name, I will try to abbreviate when possible um, in a way that makes sense. So front bumpers and rear bumpers I tend to name F bump one because most likely I'm going to build a couple more bumpers in the future. I'll have some kind of brush guard. I'll probably have a heavier off-road bumper with a winch. And so I'll name those F-Bump 2, F-Bump 3. And then I know when I'm doing my exporting and my XML stuff, which bumpers are which. It just makes it easier to keep track of those things. So we have F-Bump 1 for the bumper, the front bumper. We have all the glass. We have two pieces of the grill. We'll join those. We have two parts for the headlights because there was some extra garbage in there. Uh, so there's the rear bumper for our bump one. Steering wheel, tail lens, tail lights. Okay. And then we had a bunch of trim pieces join. And then the rear wheel wells. Or the lower wells. So now the next step, now that we have everything all kind of put together, the next step that I like to do is start a new collection. And this is where anything that is going to be able, anything that's able to be removed or added to the truck is called an add on within the game. So I like to put my add-ons separate from the truck. So we'll put them into a separate collection. And this allows us to easily turn on and off all add-ons. And that will make our life a whole lot easier later when we're trying to export just the truck and not all the extra add-ons because the truck needs to be separate by itself. So we have the add-ons in a separate area. And this is now a good point to save this. Okay, so the next thing that I like to do is we're going to start to add the bones for the truck. So we'll come into add armature single bone. It's going to put a single bone there at the bottom. We're going to make it bigger. And we want this to be anchored at the center point of the ground. So this is our main bone that everything else is going to come off of. We're going to go into edit mode, add single bone. That's the one downfall of having the one giant bone in the center is that all of them are going to spawn in that one spot and we have to keep moving them to get to them. Try to get it standing up straight. So. This first bone is named bone bone root node yeah. that is our main root node bump the second one is going to be bone body underscore cdt This bone is the anchor point for all of the XML files. Anything that's written in the programming section is going to relate back to this bone. So the next thing we need to do is parent these two bones together. So we're going to pick this one and then we're going to pick. So we'll pick the child first and then the parent make keep offset. And so now that bone is parented. We're going to need 
we're going to do a very simple build on this. We're not going to do anything overly advanced. I'm trying to keep this tutorial simple and easy to follow. So we're only going to add two more bones, and that's going to be one for the front axle, one for the rear axle, and maybe I'll add a third bone for the steering wheel. Add some. Okay, so the next part is going to be parent these bones together. Make keep offset. Have to parent that. Parent make keep offset. Now we have our main our main root node. We have this anchor bone for all of the for all of the XML coding and different parts and pieces of the truck within that. And then we have the two axles. We can then put this armature into this collection, turn the collection back on, and eh, I kind of guessed at to where these axle bones needed to be. It wasn't exactly that far off. Oops. Somewhere around there, and somewhere around there. So now we have the basic armature. Next step, we're going to need to add in a rear suspension or a complete suspension system. Um, so we will probably do that in the next episode. And so far, I hope you've started to get a little bit of a grasp on what goes into making a SnowRunner model. Um, hopefully you like what you saw. Um, feel free to leave comments in the comment section down below. And I thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.